The word stonewalling. It's been showing up a lot lately in news stories and in conversations. How does stonewalling come into being a foundation and or a platform? Plus, Friday the 13th has always been somewhat of a day of uh, endless awareness. Does it really have biblical connections? My name is Harold. I'm a daily writer, a silent wolf. That means I stand on the sidelines and do nothing but watch. I listen, I study, and then we activate. I call it The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. Yes, it's my morning writing. As a receiver of thoughts and ideas, we as people tend to throw things to the side and deal with it later. When a subject arrives inside of me, I know it's time to dig in. It's still keeping that daily journal, but by doing the research, the pictures become clearer. This is The Daily Mess. Observation number 95. What is stonewalling? The term keeps popping up inside news stories, and the more I read about it, the more the term paints this picture of a total disconnection. Stonewalling is defined as being a tactic where someone completely refuses to talk to one person or multiple groups. There are no calls, no text messaging, no emails. It's a complete vocal shutdown. Now, psychologists say it's their way of trying to get the opposite side to come crawling to you to have a conversation, basically meaning a power play. Many narcissists hold this thinking process to be true. They hold it over what is called an anxious attachment style personality. Those on the side of the relationship need the conversation and or attention, but with stonewalling, they are kept at bay. The best way to get beyond stonewalling is to stay silent with no reaction. A narcissist loves attention and can't handle it when things go silent. Being stonewalled is an unhealthy, dramatized experience. The move should always be to break free by locating a different circle to walk with. Hey, coming up next, Friday the 13th. Is it really connected to the Bible? Hey, thanks for coming back to The Daily Mess. Why do we fear Friday the 13th? Some historians believe it's rooted in Christianity and the Bible. The big book tells the story of Jesus' Last Supper, where 13 people were present. The crucifixion took place on a Friday. The pagan meaning of Friday the 13th is much different. It's a day to worship the divine feminine that lives in each and every one of us, to honor the cycles of creation, death, as well as rebirth. In pagan times, Fridays were always seen as a day of celebration, and 13 was a sacred number because it corresponds to the 13 yearly moon and menstrual cycles. So what about the Hollywood-driven Friday the 13th movie franchise? As dark as the stories were, writers, actors, and directors made a lot of green. That doesn't seem so unlucky. But what's the rumor about Friday the 13th, the movie series, being based on a true event? It's actually true. A massacre took place in 1960s Finland. A very eerie experience that fueled speculation that this is where the idea came from for the Friday the 13th adventure. It's only 24 hours, yet Friday the 13th always has enough willingness to poison your anxiety. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.